Hi, I'm Oliver Heckman, presenting a research conducted by us and our team at the SUTD MIT International Design Center on user-driven parcellation of high-rise units for future urban habitation. Our research at large aimed to develop design knowledge and computational tools helping to reduce the environmental footprint of both the construction and operation of residential buildings. One of the various assets that we studied in this context is adaptability of layouts to changing demands. And here we were keen to develop both respective design strategies, but also computational tools that cater the emerging decision-making processes. I will begin with briefly elaborating on the respective backgrounds, by also referring to John R. Bracken's open building paradigm that the project builds upon both with its design and computation parts. I will then explain the computational framework that we developed, that we used in the larger context of this research to measure the resilience of layouts to adapt to changing demands, but that we took here as an instrument to process design participation of numerous prospective tenants in high-rise buildings with the aim to moderate and allocate their requirements with a unit parcellation algorithm. As part of our research on future urban habitation, we agree with various demographic research that there will be a significant uncertainties and dynamics when it comes to de determine future forms of cohabitation. According to Euromonitor, there are a few significant shifts that are currently shaping household profiles and that are meant to have a significant impact on future market demands. But in general, we argue that designing adaptable habitats would be a socially and environmentally sustainable response to these dynamically changing demand patterns. But that at this point, not only a vast majority of residential buildings are entirely deterministic, but that also respective tools to measure the resilience of layouts to changing demand, demands and to moderate numerous eventually conflicting demands are missing at this point. Conceptually, we build up on John Harbracken's open building concept that we consider as a holistic concept for both the design and operation of buildings to be adaptable to diverse user requirements. A characteristic of the open building concept is to separate this permanent support structure from the adaptable infill elements that can act as agents of connect connecting or disconnecting adjacent spaces. Here, in the exemplary housing project Modern Fleet, a support structure has been used as a template with poly polyvalent adjacent cells that were parcelated in a subsequent step into units by means of the infill systems. Likewise, also the polyvalent layout patterns that we develop for case studies within our research does also not predetermine any division into hermetic units and is thus entirely open to a moderation of multiple user requirements regarding the size and form of their units. We thus read plans as patterns of adjacent cells that could be either connected or disconnected to form unit clusters meeting specific demands with the info elements as user responsive agents. But while the morphological patterns might allow for constant adaptability to divide or connect generated parcels, it poses a co cognitive challenge for designers and developers to si simultaneously accommodate and parcelate numerous user wishes within an entire building. Hence, we think there's a need for a computational framework targeted to this issue. And this will be discussed in this presentation. The computational framework that we develop consists of four parts. The first step of the process is to identify which are the support and which are the infill elements within a floor plan. The second is to encode the floor plan into a digital format, applying a space index approach that preserves the spatial relationships of adjacent spaces that we're interested in. Step three is for prospective tenants to specify the demand regarding size and location of the unit and then for an algorithm that would develop to search for permutations that could best satisfy the user demand subjected to the constraints of the floor plan. 
Step 4 is the process of optimizing, resulting in a parcellation pattern that accommodates and allocates ideally all user wishes. So beginning with step 1. <clears throat> the support elements in grey and black are the supporting structures that will never be replaced throughout the lifetime of the building. The infill elements, shown here in red, are elements that divide adjoining spaces and can be removed to generate larger clusters and vice versa. With the support and infill elements thus identified, <clears throat> the floor plan is encoded into a graph syntax. Spaces are annotated as nodes, with different room types attributes to specify their functions. The generic attributes in this case are hallway, wet cells, normal space and storage. The adjacent nodes are linked to each other via edges. The edges have two attributes, namely the isAccessible attribute and the isInfill attribute. If the wall dividing the spaces is an infill element, the isInfill element is labeled as true. The isAccessible attribute is a flag that the algorithm will toggle to generate and test out different permutations of the floor plan to attempt to satisfy the user demands. So now coming to the user preference inputs. The type of units that the user can select from is determined in terms of the number of each room types that is specified earlier. On top of this, the user can select the general level and wing position of the unit that they want to stay at. We then consolidate all this information in a 2D matrix that will be passed into the algorithm for further processing. This step is followed by the permutation search. After receiving information on graph syntax of the floor plan, a custom graph traversal algorithm will search through the graph syntax for permutations of predefined room types. So iteratively, the algorithm will start at each entrance and check if the addition of rooms can make up a unit. If it does, it stores the unit and moves on to another entrance. Unique permutation of the graph syntax is stored for further analysis. The following slides <coughs> illustrate the generated output. Please remind that at each level there are different user demands. The parcellation are ranked due to demand satisfaction and the white space ratio and the only best performing parcellation are assigned to each level. In the first packing procedure, the unique parcellation permutations are assigned to each level of each of the building based on the demand satisfaction and the white space ratio. However, not all users will be able to get a unit at the preferred level and wing location. As an example, there might be 20 tenants wanting a location at the top level of the building at the west wing, which is more than what the building can accommodate. And maybe nobody might want a location at the bottom left of the building. So there will be empty spaces left at the building at this stage. The unallocated demands will go through subsequent rounds of selection in which they are selected to fit into the unclaimed nodes by the ranking of unit types that they have selected and then by the location. And what you see here is just an animated GIF of the field demand parcellation level by level as the optimized result of moderating and allocating all user wishes. So there are 25 all together. And now a few words to conclude. A computational method has been presented by us to moderate and allocate numerous user requests in provident floor plans. The floor plan is first encoded in a graph syntax manner, then a customized algorithm is used to search for unit parcellation, driven by simultaneous user wishes as input data. For future work, or as elements that we have worked on already since our submission, we intend to integrate the computational framework within a web interface to facilitate user preference inputs as something that is usable to developers during real-world residential project launches. A similar device in an AR environment will be presented by us in our project for a hybrid high-rise commune in the Singapore Pavilion at the upcoming Venice Architecture Biennale uh, in 2021. 
Also, we've since then applied the algorithm to measure the resilience of floor plan layouts to future user demand patterns. In that case, extrapolated from demographic models that we have developed. This research has been funded by the SUTD MRT International Design Center and the ROOP Global Research Challenge. Thanks very much and please get in touch with us if you have any question or feedback.